Welcome to the 2012 Los Angeles Auto Show. My name's Dean Case. I manage the communications for Mazda Speed Motorsports. But today I get to do a little different role. I get to talk to three of my buddies. We're going to talk about the new 2014 Mazda 6 here. We're getting ready. It's a little bit chaotic. This is a setup day at the LA Auto Show. We're going to talk a little bit about the design. We're going to talk a little bit about the powertrain. And what's nearest, nearest to my heart, we're going to talk about racing this car with one of my good friends who also races. So, Derek, we're going to introduce Derek Jenkins, and this is going to be live to tape here. There's no rehearsals. We have not done this before. Good to see you. But uh, Derek's my buddy here. Derek's been running the operations for Mazda Design for, what, three and a half years three now? Three and a half years, yeah. Still so kind uh, of a newbie, but uh, been involved in a lot of fun projects since I've been here. But we're going to talk. Tell us about this stunning car here. Oh, gosh. This is the new all-new all Mazda 6. Um, you know, we've been working on this project basically for the last... Uh, three years, two and a half, three years. It started with the, you know, the Shinari concept vehicle. We did that um, in 2010 and showed it in Mil Mil uh, Milan, Milan, Italy. And that was really kind of the first step in the new form language, uh, which we call Kodo. And this is the second production vehicle behind CX-5 to really capture that design language. How would you describe Kodo? You know, Kodo is all about the proportion of the car and the overall dynamics of the car. So you see with the Mazda 6, there's a lot of movement, a lot of, a lot of flow in the, in the volumes of the vehicle. And we really established that with um, the Shinari concept. The other thing is the whole new face of the vehicle is really part of this Kodo generation of, of cars. It's a lot more upright. It's a lot more com confident, a little more sinister, you know. And we're trying to capture that in the car. Design guys like to talk, you know, you're very sophisticated in your design language and how you communicate this, but for the person who just sees on the street, what's their reaction going to be? Wow or sinister? Or? You know, we want the car, we don't want the car to look like it's standing still. We want the car to very much look alive if possible. Look in motion, look alive, look dynamic, and try to get that quality across. Give the car's character, you know what I mean? And that, that's really why we speak in those terms, yeah. you know? Well, why don't you want to walk us through from yeah, sure. end to end? Absolutely. What were you thinking here? I mean, let's start with the front. Like I mentioned before, it's more upright. We have our signature grill blade, which has started with the CX-5, and now we brought it in here. A lot more of this eagle eye type uh, front character, and that's what gives the car a lot more of this sinister look. Really pronounced uh, fenders on the front, you know, and that's, again, part of the Kodo language that we brought through CX-5. Was, did you get pushed back from engineering? This is a very complex shape. That can't be easy to manufacture. You know, the biggest challenge with things like this is pedestrian impact. We have a lot of legislation in this area. So trying to get it really low and sleek is, I mean, the hard part of our job, really. Yeah. You know, so 19-inch uh, wheels, you know, so the car has a really nice stance. Wheels are really pushed to the corner of the car. And then um, really dynamic sideline really compact cabin that's much more, it's more cab, we call it cab rearward. That just means that it's a longer hood and that the cabin of the car is more towards the rear. And that, that also gives it the dynamic that we're talking about with Coda design and gives it that kind of upmarket feeling, yeah. you know. So around the back, same thing, tail lights really wide to the corners and really trying to get that strong stance. So we have a lot of sculpting in the rear, rear bumper, very pronounced rear spoiler. All of that gives it this kind of, again, like sports sedan feeling, really compact trunk, very sleek and dynamic. One thing I like, this is a very, actually, I'd say it's a very subtle spoiler. It's it, very which, subtle. But it's usually an indication it's a working spoiler, not cosmetic. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's subtle in its size, but we wanted this to be very pronounced and sharp. We didn't want this clunky kind of floating wing. We wanted something very diffuser like you know and just more more precise but still that that really you know sticks out a little bit but also i mean that <clears throat> does add to the aerodynamics i mean this car sky no question Act, right yeah. i mean because sky active is not one thing it's everything absolutely and the fact that you did weight reduction you did aerodynamics, aerodynamics. you did everything is involved in trying to get the most efficiency out of the vehicle and you named it, you know, engine is key, weight is key, and aerodynamics is key to, to achieve that. And it's not just, it's not only about great fuel economy, it's also about the performance of the vehicle in general. So the design has to complement that and work towards those same goals as well. And hopefully the design says that to the, you asked about the customer on the street. 
I'm hoping they see that in, in the car, you know. So any other feature you want to talk about on the outside you know, there? just if you look, what I really love about this car is just the sleekness of the cabin, you know. It's not your typical, we didn't want this typical family sedan feeling. Even though the car's got great space, great trunk size, we really want it to come off like a sports sedan or even a sports coupe. And this pillar, this cabin, and the way the wheels are placed at the corners is what I think communicates Well, this is even that, also you know? a very aggressive color for a yeah. car of the size. Yeah, we've worked really hard with this new generation of uh, paint colors um, to get something that really helps to illuminate and highlight the sculpting that goes into the car. You know, we spend just so many hours sculpting in clay, trying to get this a, a certain quality, a, cer a certain sensuous feeling to the form language. And the paint is so critical to help show that off, especially under good lighting or California sun, yeah. you know, um, really show off that, that form. And How does this look out doors in the courtyard? Oh, unbelievable. It's yeah. just the, this red, we call it soul red, and it has a really fine technical metallic. When it's in the sunlight, yeah. just it, it's explosive, you know, okay. and really, again, really shows the strong highlights from the sun and then nice deep rich contours so, so whoever buys the car is going to need to have some mother's polish there I to make hope sure so. it they, keeps it they're going to want to keep it clean you know yeah. that's the idea right well, let's look inside i yeah. mean mazda's always been a driver oriented car company yeah what what were your thinking in here you know and this is again goes back to koto design and a little bit to do with sky active as well you know everything we do we want it to not distract from the driving experience you know we want everything to be easy to understand, that someone can jump in this car, you sit in. and the second they sit in the car, they immediately feel like connected. They feel, you know, not a bunch of gizmos, not a bunch yeah. of lights and switches, just they feel comfortable. The visibility is outstanding. I mes mentioned the cab rearward before, cab rearward uh, proportion. That means the A post is a little farther back. So what happens is you get a better visibility out of, out of, uh, from the driver's seat. And what's the number one thing you want when you're in a driver's car? You want to be able to see out, you know? And, and think about a race car or anything. You have to have good visibility. Everything's really easy in uh, close proximity, easy to touch. The other big thing with Coda design in this generation of Mazda 6 is material quality. All the soft touch finishes are very matte. They don't have, they're very low sheen. We put a lot of effort into all the fine trim, aluminum trim and that everything has a nice tactile quality to it and really looks upscale, you know? Um, this is where we really feel like this car has a chance to be a kind of class above um, experience for our customers and, you know, really kind of speaks to almost a more, a more premium car but at a more affordable price, yeah. you know? And um, the materials have been, been a big part of that. If you look at even our leather quality, perforation, the double saddle stitching, um, the highlight red, you know, all of that is kind of speaking to that. Well, like you and I are about average height, but you've got several inches oh, yeah. well above you, and this has a sunroof, which always takes away a little bit. So That's it looks right. like ample headroom for your 95th percentile American male. And you know, even though we want a sporty car and a sleek silhouette, you still have to have a respectable amount of space in the car. People have the expectations. I feel, especially Mazda customer, expects the car to be both spacious and sleek and sexy you know and that's as a designer that's sometimes at odds you yeah. know because we always want to make the car really low and trying to make the car look low is part of what being a good de designer is about you know well this is you know the mazda 6 is an international car it's gonna be sold in other markets how much of this is there anything here that's unique for the u.s market you know there are small things that they fine tune about the car and we have uh, some different colors, some different trims yeah. that sell in different markets around the world. But, you know, this is part of how we approach our, uh, our products now, especially global products like the Mazda 6, is really a group effort among the design groups. You know, we have our studio here in California, and then another group in Germany, and then Japan. And we collectively go through this project stage by stage to optimize it for a global market, you know, and I think I think this product's really going to perform well globally. You know, that's my my hope and my belief. No, it looks it looks great. So, it, sometimes the design guys, you're involved at the earliest stages. Now, have you got to go out and drive it yourself? You've been on any? Yes, yes, I've been on some test drives with journalists and and uh, 
had that pleasure. It drives amazing. It, it drives like a sports sedan. Yeah. You know, it's not, like I said, it's not your typical kind of family sedan. It really feels like uh, you're driving a sports sedan. And um, as with the CX-5, you feel like, you, in, you feel space inside, but the car feels like a much more compact car because you can just toss it around, you know? And that's where I feel like this is a true Mazda because it yeah. lives up to that, the zoom zoom and the driving yeah. experience. And it's like that, you know, we want to do cars for people that love cars and love driving cars. And it's know? affordable too. I mean, we used to joke years ago in the studio, it's far more difficult to design a great $20,000 sports car than a $100,000 sports car. Doing a supercar is like, you could do that in your sleep. Yeah. That, that's not a, you know, it's fun. Right. You know, doing a, a good looking, uh, you know, car that's in a mainstream segment, that's very challenging. Very challenging. Because, yeah, the, the price targets, you know, you know, you got to make it affordable. But Price targets, people's expectations in these established segments, it's very challenging to meet those and give them something truly original. So really, the person who's contemplating a vehicle in this segment, they need to get in and touch and feel and drive. I would challenge or hope that any consumer that's serious about a mid-size sedan would drive this back to back with any of the mainstream competitors because I think this car is head and shoulders above most of our, our competition or all of it for that matter. So you're playing around with a little control there. You this is our HMI controller and this activates we have a dual system where you can operate audio navigation. Now hang on you're, you're, you're going into designer speak. HMI. Sorry, HMI human machine interface right. <laughs> um, and this controls audio all your multimedia your navigation and phone features you can also bypass this and do it on the touch screen because some we find that sometimes people prefer touch screen and sometimes people prefer also oh, you're not locked to, into one or the other no. and that's very unique to Mazda okay. typically um, other companies have committed so you always have to be touch screen or you always have to be here there's a little bit of a learning curve here but once you have it Sometimes, personally, I find that this is better for um, uh, visibility. You know, you're not trying to refocus here. You can just kind of manipulate. So the driver can focus on driving. Exactly. You know, you the whole distracted glance, driver issue. Exactly. And you only glance down periodically to see where the cursors are. Okay. Well, thank you. Any other final <laughs> thoughts other than uh, you got a new baby that you're uh, well, introducing to the world? Yeah, we got a few things going on, but, uh, you know, it, it's... You know, I just, I'm just really excited about this project, and I'm uh, excited to see how it's received, you know, because this yeah. is like um, that kind of period after a lot of work. You get to see something out on the road. You get to see the, the, the response to it, and, um, you know, we're excited and, so far. And I want to invite you. you got to come out and join us at the racetrack next year when we're going to be racing this. As long as I can drive the car. <laughs> well, I don't know. You'll have to talk to Jonathan Bomarito. Okay, <laughs> we'll see about that. Good luck on that one. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Dean. Appreciate it. We'll see you.